Senna started his Grand Prix career in a Lotus, and now the Elise is back. Getting to grips with Donington Park. We've got all the action from round two of the Renault 2000 Championship. And finally, the Renault Clios make their way to the track for round two of the UK Cup. But first, the sports cars. The CABC initials of founder Colin Chapman were the hallmarks of Formula One success through the 60s and 70s. And one driver with special memories of that era is Ian Ashley. He drove for Lotus and BRM in the 70s before an accident ended his Formula One career. Now he's back. Essentially, I've been out of the sport for a long time. Uh, I came back. I've been flying for the last sort of 15 years in Learjets in America and so on and uh, um, I really just wanted to get back all my Emerson and Fittipaldi and all my mates have been racing for a long time, Derek Bell, all, all of them and uh, so I had this opportunity to come back here and uh, uh, I just wanted a level playing field which this is and obviously my age gets into GT or historics or things like this and uh, instructing uh, uh, proven to a lot of people I'm still very quick uh, and uh, now I need to prove it again uh, in this so what was the attraction the thrill of the competition or the pleasure of driving hey, mate, I'm, I'm still competitive and I, I don't want to waste what I've got I've wasted enough I should have been racing as soon as I after my accident in Canada in F1 long ago I, I should have just come back, but um, at the moment I'm, I'm trying to downscale to small cars again, you know, because you get into the big car, powerful car, Vogue, and, and all these lads, they're just at it, you know. <laughs> but it's fun, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I, just, I just hate being uncompetitive, uh, so it's getting better. Well, the opening round at Brands Hatch proved that Ian had lost none of his competitive spirit. As Adam Wilcox headed for victory, Ashley was locked in a thrilling battle for second with another Formula One veteran, Martin Donnelly in number one, and sports car specialist Mark Cole. Sadly though, it was to end in tears. Yes, I was a little bit uh, touch and go, so to speak, at Brands, but I did get the fastest lap, which shut them all up. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was just up to second place in the points there, and. Uh, looking to get past Martin who was getting, uh, you didn't see, but around the back Martin was having a, a fierce time <laughs> so rather than put the pressure on him I was sort of just settling to try to get a run on him and uh, then Mark had spun and was all upset with himself I think and uh, made a brave move at Hill where there really, you know, I didn't think there was a place but uh, uh, after that um, I just had to make up the best I could but um, yeah, it's alright, it's coming on and it's a long season and uh, I'm enjoying myself a 91.9 mile an hour lap round Donington Park puts Ben Devlin on pole position ahead of Edward Horner, Matt Pinney and Matt Turner. Spencer Marsh and Ian Ashley line up on row three ahead of Jonathan T and Mark Fullerlove. 22 cars line up on the grid. It's a 24 minute race which should equate to about 20 laps as the lights go to green. And it's the yellow car of Ben Devlin makes a perfect start down to Reggae Corner ahead of the orange car of Edward Horner but Matt Pinney down the inside and plenty of jostling going on as Simon Hill tries to make up ground down the inside, a great move. Simon Hill started 12th on the tail now of Ian Ashley, so he's up into sixth position, a brilliant start. Down the crane it goes, balancing the car on the cold tyres, and at the head of the field is Ben Devlin from Edward Horner. Car's locking brakes though on the run into the old hairpin. Oh, and a little bit wide up onto the curbs, and away Ben Devlin goes, spins off onto the grass. And that means Edward Horner is now in the lead. Matt Penny right behind him in the yellow and purple car. Then the black machine of Spencer Marsh in third position. And behind them, Matt Turner moving up the American driver in the second of the orange cars. Looks down the inside there of Spencer Marsh. And behind them now, the lime green car of Simon Hill. What a start for him. And having dropped back just a little bit there, Ian Ashley is down in eighth position in the traditional green and yellow Lotus. But someone else off, Keiko Iharo, the Japanese lady, off in the gravel trap at Coppice Corner. But it's three abreast down to the chicane. Simon Hill, Matt Turner and Jonathan T. And it's Simon Hill who takes the advantage. And a superb opening lap takes him to fourth position. But it's Edward Horner in car 11 ahead of Matt Pinney, then Spencer Marsh, and behind the black car, the lime green nose of Simon Hill, riding down into Reggae Corner with Spencer Marsh, third place, and some interesting lines out of Reggae Corner. Edward Horner and Matt Pinney absolutely on the limit ahead, and on go the headlights for Spencer Marsh. He's trying everything he can to psych out the two men ahead of him. And don't forget Simon Hill, Matt Turner and Jonathan T are right behind the black car. There is number 10, Spencer Marsh, headlights ablaze through the old hairpin. Now, 
on the run up to McLean's and absolutely nothing between all of these cars really equally matched machines Matt Finney in second place Edward Horner now just starting to get a little bit of an advantage and Simon Hill on an absolute blinder the former Renault Spider racer Simon Hill closes right into the slipstream of Spencer Marsh's car now. This is where you get the slipstream toe. Yet the black car taking the hole in the air in front of him and moving across, just not leaving enough room for Simon Hill. Simon tries to go all the way around the outside, gets off the racing line. He's going to be on the dirt on the outside now. Keeps it on the tarmac, right on the rev limit though, using every one of the Lotus's 200 horsepower and some fantastic scraps going on up and down the field. Simon Hill now having to defend from the number 12 car. Matt Turner, the American, followed by Jonathan T. Number 17 moving up, Peter Kate as well in the yellow and red car. And once again, the rev limiter light on the dashboard flickers on Simon Hill's car. Nailing the throttle and just look how late he breaks down into the old hairpin. But such a disappointment there. Number three, Ben Devlin, is being lapped. He is in all sorts of problems. The man who was on pole position and who led the race threw it all away. And he is limping back to the pits. But it's absolutely on the limit for the first three. Spencer Marsh in his third season of racing. Race Formula Vauxhall and Formula Ford 1600 before moving up to the Lotus Sport Championship. And he is running in a good position here. Matt Finney and Ed Horn are still ahead. And again, using the slipstream, gets the nose alongside, and this could well be second place. The black car trying to force Matt Penning wide. Has he done it? Yes, he has. Up into second place goes number 10, Spencer Marsh. Matt Penny, the BRDC Junior Vectra Champion, forced to settle for third place. Coming up now to lap number 99, Matt Bartram running at the tail of the field. And number 77, Matt Penny has not given up yet. The pressure is definitely going to be on. Spencer Marsh as they run down the Craner curves. Simon Hill still there defending that fourth position and closing in on the top three. And again, just see how late he breaks from 135 miles an hour, just at the 100 meter board, down two gears, controls the car, drifts beautifully through the old hairpin. But meanwhile, Edward Horner is taking advantage of all this dog fighting to open a little bit of airspace between himself, Spencer Marsh and Matt Penny. Simon Hill still there in that fourth position with a distinctive lurid lime green car. Then it's Matt Turner from the USA and Jonathan T in the second of the black cars. But this man, Spencer Marsh, can he now close in on the race leader, Edward Horner? Horner in car 11, still coming to close in on the man who's going to be a lap down very shortly, Matt Bartram. Bartram obviously has had problems early in the race, but he's now running very close to the pace of the leaders. It's going to take a while to pass them. The number 11 car, Edward Horner, throwing up a little bit of a dirt on the exit of the chicane, as does Spencer Marsh. And all eyes now are on that number 11 car. Is he going to get phased by the slower car ahead? Horner, Marsh, Pinney, Hill, Turner and T, the top six cars. And behind the black car of Jonathan T, number 17, closing in now in that seventh place, Peter Kate. Man from Blockley. Had a big accident at Brands Hatch, has literally bounced back from that in some form. And once again, Simon Hill is the man with the traffic jam forming up behind him. Four cars now behind Simon Hill. The question is, is Simon pacing himself here, resting his tyres for a little bit of a push on the top three? Or is he in turn in trouble and he's going to have the rest of them crawling all over the rear wing of that green and black car? Riding out of McLean's up over the crest, the double apex right-hander at Coppice. Clip the apex on the inside once, then run wide. Clip again at the second time. And then on to that very, very long Wheatcroft straight, fastest part of the circuit. Now watch the rev limiter light come on on the dash. There it is, maximum revs up into top gear. And the speed still building up to 140 miles an hour. And the man making his move, Jonathan T from sixth place, challenging Matt Turner. But the American former sports car club of America, single seater racer, stays ahead. But limping into the pits, Matt Bartram, the man from Eaton in Norfolk.